Thank you very much. Um, so before I move on, yeah, th this is going to be very advanced stuff, um, not too advanced, like it's going to be like taking too long to do a setup, but uh, we'll, we'll do like, a, I'll do like walkthroughs about uh, recreating some some like images and stuff that we might see in professional streams as close as possible with the equipment that we have. We're not doing like a professional setup. So everything that we have, everything that I'm going to talk about today is uh, going to be using OBS Studio. And um, it can cover every single game that we have. Um, if you do have like Overwatch, for example, anything that I show you can get applied in Overwatch. Um, I have stream setups for League of Legends, Rocket League, and Super Smash Brothers. I do have a Hearthstone team. We just don't stream their matches because Rocket League is a little bit bigger here. Um, but this can work. You can find ways to do stuff for any of these titles. So this is what I'm going to be going over today. Um, a lot of the advanced features of OBS Studio. I'll talk about Stream Deck a little bit, and then we'll have some time for a QA. and a If um, you have questions about any of the topics that I'm currently covering, just you know, put that in the chat while I'm in that topic. I'll, you know, I, I would love to answer that during that time frame as well. Uh, but if you have like any other questions, just say those to the end. All right. So first thing is we're going to talk about how to set up transitions and how to do some filter magic in OBS Studio. So what you just saw right there is a transition. Uh, it's very nice, you know, as you're going through a, um, a change in a scene to have some sort of markup to kind of show like, all right, we are transitioning from a new scene. The very basic types of transitions are going to be cut and fade. Um, and the other ones that you can set up in OBS are swipe, slide, stingers, fade to colors, and a luma wipe. Um, you can also do matte transitions, which are a newer type of transition in OBS Studio. You can override transitions, and you can add um, filters. So let me kind of um, go through this link right here. I'm not going to open this link, but this link right here can show you how you can set up transitions in OBS Studio. But I'm going to pull over my OBS Studio right now. Um, are you seeing this right now? my OBS setup. Or did I screw up sharing my screen properly? Oh, great. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we have some scenes down here. Um, if you've never seen OBS, again, uh, I encourage you to look at the basics, the recording that I have linked at the beginning. Um, but we have OBS. And then I've changed my layout a little bit. But over here on the right side, um, we have scene transitions. So in this, we have like the normal cut. So when I swap scenes, um, and we're going to get a little bit of a mirror effect here. But when I swap scenes, it just cuts immediately. When I go to this scene, it just cuts immediately. But And then when I go back here, it just cuts immediately. Our fade will kind of just slowly fade in and out between the two. So that can work. And then the one that I have added in, and this was a uh, a stinger transition. So um, I added in a stinger, and then I just renamed it uh, to arrow wipe because that was the one that I had. So when I go from my start screen to like our casters that might be casting Boom, they're right here on camera. Oh, wait, that was fade. Oh, arrow wipe. Okay. And now we're into the start screen. Boom. And now we're onto the camera. We're, we're facing the casters. You're able to hear what they're talking about. Uh, they're, you're able to hear the dialogue between them. Okay, now let's get into the game. So I don't actually have a Smash game right now, but I actually have a screen share happening with my other computer, uh, which has LCS on. Uh, the red arrow up is a downloaded file um, that is in the freebies on the next slide. Uh, but if I go to like my Smash fight, bam, this is what's actually happening on my other computer, right? This is so 
so lucky that we have the LCS live right now. Um, but it's a nice transition between them. So let me, uh, that's how we set up the scene transitions. Just red arrow. Um, that one's a stinger. And you can set up, like, do you want it to slide left and right? Um, do you want it fading to a particular color? Uh, cuts are very nice. And then if you right click here, you can transition to, you can transition override. So maybe um, if you have like multiple player cams or you want something like that, that's going to normally just be a cut between two players. Um, I, that's uh, actually happening right now in the LCS. So if we come over here uh, to my smash fight, because that's what normally is here, right? If there's a different angle that they're going to be showing on this player here, or maybe they're going to go to a different player cam in the bottom, that's just going to normally be a cut transition. Not any fade. You're not going to do a big wipe there. But when you're changing a big dramatic change, um, that's when you're going to want to override. Um, so you can right click transition override. And so whenever it switches to this scene, it'll only use a fade. So, all right, that one is going to be a uh, an arrow up, but I just overrode it going back to my camera scene. So that one is just a fade. Something you might want to consider is transition overrides if you have like a lot of stuff happening. Um, my setup's pretty simple for my students at this time, but if you want to take it to that next level, we can definitely do that. Uh, adding filters, we can see that on my end, I, I have this one named green screen camera. And uh, this is actually, let me turn off that filter. Okay, so I have a, a filter, a chroma key on my webcam that's facing this wall. Um, you can add filters. Let me show you how to do that. You right click the source and you go up to filters. You could do that or you could left click the source and filters are gonna be one of the options right here. So I'll go to filters right here. You can always turn on and off your filters. Um, this is going to be an effect filter. If you want to add an effect, you just hit the plus sign and a chroma key is a good green screen effect. Um, I already have one added, but then you can do like a color type. Maybe you have a blue wall behind your caster, so you can do a blue color key. Um, let me turn this one on, but you can see it's highlighting everything out because it sees a lot of blue in the picture. You can um, change it to magenta. Green's pretty common. Uh, when it's lit up very nicely and my, my camera and everything is set up, um, we can use that. Uh, but you can kind of see so that green screen in it behind the computer monitor, it is gone. Let me actually just move this a little bit. Yeah, there. So that green screen is completely black. So whatever is popping up in front of that green screen is going to be um, like the caster. It's going to be like they're in a black room. You can put graphics behind them once you key it out. Um, so that's the different types of transitions. This is a pretty quick one. Uh, Mat transitions are explained in this link. Uh, I went over how to do a transition override between particular scenes and how to add in filters. Speaking about filters, let me go back to OBS again real quick. Uh, you can actually do audio filters, which I'll go into a little bit more depth later. But if you hit any of the cog wheels on your audios, they also have filters. So you can add in by hitting the plus sign again, they have different options that you can use there. So like in a noisy room, I've normally got practice going on for one team while one team's having a match. Um, you know, noise suppression would be really important to add to your headsets. All right. Um, so some free resources that I've got is are these matte transitions. Um, these are straight to a Google Drive. You can just download it straight from there. Um, stingers wipes, the red arrow wipe or the red arrow uh, stinger that I had um, that I'm actually using for my team. That one's in those folders. You can just pick one, download that, use it as you wish. Uh, and something that I added here is royalty free music. If you want like um, music playing at the beginning of your streams, um, 
use this one. This is from 100 Thieves. I think they're both, both the files in here, I think are from 100 Thieves. Uh, they're free, copyright free, royalty free. Uh, you can use this on all your streams, whether it's Twitch, you can put it on YouTube videos. Um, it's going to work anywhere. And so here's an example of a broadcast I was part of this past summer. You can see how effective that mat transition is. It's like, okay, great. You know, we're, we're doing our thing. Whoa, music is loud. I don't know if I'm sharing my sounds. And then we're into the game. So that transition really makes it smooth. Like, okay, we're chilling, we're popping, and then bam, we're in the game and our casters are talking. So that's um, a good use of a mat transition. And this one right here is a link to uh, download some mat transitions that you might want. So just some free ones that I saw. I don't use a mat transition for my cast from school. All right, so now we're going to go to uh, nesting scenes and we're going to actually try to set something up here. Okay, so for the first thing in nesting scenes, um, I have lots of scenes. The, if you look under my scenes, I have Be Right Back, basic recording. Uh, this is my teaching setup um, that I screenshotted here. But when I'm doing like, um, when I'm doing like webinars or something like that, or if I'm just teaching my classes online, um, I want them to see me while I'm talking to them, kind of like you can do in Zoom. You can see my camera and you can see my the screen that I'm sharing. Uh, so I might want to transition to my face, the bottom left, make it a little bit more di dynamic, move it to the bottom right. Um, I want might want to like really have a big point over a slideshow, so I make myself large in the center. And if you look at my sources, these are actually all imported scenes into my sources. So if you want to add, uh, and I'm doing the same thing here. I've got my music here as an individual source, but my music scene, there's only one thing in here, and that's my music soundtrack. Okay, but if I can, it's easier to embed a scene into a. Uh, into another scene for a, a myriad of reasons. One of the reasons why I embed my music scene instead of just reusing this source, like, hey, I'm just playing music. Why don't I just reuse this source? That's because when I transition from my start screen to something that's also going to have music, like my Smash waiting scene where we're doing uh, Smash stage bands and stuff, I want that music, you can see it here, I want that music to still be playing without pausing. If I write, if I uh, added a, um, let's see, a media source, oh no, VLC video source, I think. No, I think it's a media source. Yeah, so, and I've, and if I added my existing music soundtrack, it would just restart when I swatch from my start screen to my Smash stage bands. And I don't want it to restart. I want that music to continue playing while uh, we make that transition happen. So the way I keep it playing is by importing the scene because the way OBS sees it is, okay, this music scene is here and then it just keeps going, wait, in the wrong one. It just keeps going in this scene as well, okay? So it, OBS thinks that the scene hasn't changed in terms of the music. So it'll keep playing throughout. So uh, that's one way you can use embedded scenes. Now I have my webcam here. Uh, and this is actually my second webcam, the one that we normally have for um, casters, not the one I'm talking to y'all on right now. But I have um, this webcam. I don't want to keep importing this into different, um, I, I have it sized and everything in the way I want it. So, if I want to go to my green screen camera, wait, I didn't do it with here. Oh, apparently I've just kept reusing the same one. Let me see. Ah, here we go. All right. So I've got my green screen camera scene, which uses my Logitech webcam. And then in this teaching scene that I had set up, 
um, it uses that the scene that I'm currently on. OK, so it's the exact same scene. But what happens is since I it's imported as a scene and not in a repeat of an individual source, I can now resize it and move it around. Well, look what happens when I go back to the original. It stays as it was. So now I can keep regurgitating these things. I can uh, duplicate this teaching two. Um, and now the scene, when I resize the scene, maybe I want it over here this time. Um, between teaching one and teaching two, that it holds on to those effects and the positions of where I want that camera. If I tried to do that as a source and re-imported that source into different scenes, um, it wouldn't do the same thing. It would actually, um, you couldn't resize it in one scene and then have it be that same size in another scene. The, there's going to be distortion here. So normally I have a bunch of helper scenes that help me um, kind of create the effects that I want. So actually, I think I've got in this link here, these are what I have for like my big production, my shout casting scenes. You can just um, download this file and then actually go to scene collection and import and then whatever your um, like navigate to the file and it'll um, It'll bring in all the scenes that I actually use in a lot of my productions, uh, my larger productions. My school production, which I'm at right now, is a little bit smaller. Um, so I, I want to kind of like see if we can recreate something here. So let's watch this video real quick. Okay, so we got some casters. Um, that's going to be the last you guys hear from me. All right, notice too. these two cameras over uh, here on the right. So you're in great All right, they got the names under there. Key, kitty, key as they take it away. Okay. Thank you. Transition, bro. and it's the same camera in different positions. So what I, the way I actually had this set up is, let's see if we can kind of do like a quick thing real, real quick. Um, I'll just make scene two, and I'm going to name this one. Let me rename it. Uh, helper scene, helper uh, camera scene. Okay, so in here, uh, this is my helper camera. So I'll add my camera to this since I already have one. I will use the same one. Okay, great. So I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to resize it. Maybe I want to crop it. Maybe I have a nice little border. I need to make it a little bit smaller, but this is pretty much it. And then I am going to add a title to the bottom of this. Uh, test title, okay. And maybe I'll just put Mr. Hernandez here. Okay, resize this a little bit. All right. So I want this to pop up in different spots, okay? Um, so I'll make a new scene. Maybe I have my League of Legends game going on. Okay, again, I've got this mirroring effect, but I can add that scene in here now as my helper camera scene, okay? So this is gonna be that camera. I'm gonna resize it, okay? If I have multiple casters, I'll, you know, I'll have one over here on the left maybe like a podcast. We have somebody over here on the left side. Um, and then I could add in the other source, the other scene to the right side. And then maybe, okay, one person has left our podcast. Uh, so I have another scene where it's just a uh, main caster. I'm just making that, that name up. So I'll import the scene here. Helper camera scene, the exact same one. And this will be uh, that same person just centered. Um, so by using like one scene that you might import into different locations um, and different backgrounds using different effects on them, you're really going to want to use um, these nested scenes.
Okay, so yeah, you just download this and you import it to OBS Studio. All right, I didn't see any questions on nested scenes, but this is really just like um, one of the most effective ways to up your stream game is to use nested scenes because then you can create a lot of different angles and looks that you might want to create um, without re-importing the same assets over and over and over. Once you get something like, okay, I'd like this look, I like it cropped in a little bit. Um, I like the name down there, but I don't want it this big in this scene. So, okay, I'll make it small and put it over here. Okay. Uh, what You can just do that a hundred different times and then just import it into um, as a scene into more scenes. I feel like I said scene a lot. And scene. All right. On to replays. <laughs> Um, so replays can be pretty difficult. Let's, let me, um, show you generally what it can look like and then, um, how I would set it up. So you're normally going to use replays in games like League of Legends, where there might be some downtime, but then you can do a replay of a big play and kind of reanalyze that. Um, you could do that in games like Hearthstone um, to kind of go back and talk about a mistake. Uh, Rocket League already uses its own uh, replays, but you could probably see it a little bit in um, a game like Overwatch. I don't really know too much about Overwatch and the, the spectator abilities if you can kind of rewind the match, but um, hopefully you guys would know a little bit more about the spectator abilities. But here's an example. All right, so we just had a big play, right? We want to see how how did this play work out? Okay. Boom, Q replay. And now this is a replay of what just happened. Right, the casters can talk about this more in depth. There's nothing happening in the game. Everyone's just recalling and respawning. This is a perfect time to talk about that big fight and keep your viewers interested. Okay, so how are you going to set this up? No, right? Um, I'm not going to play this video, um, but actually, I am going to play this video after I talk about it. What you're going to need is a completely separate person to be your replay operator. The way you're going you're going to want a large team for if you're going into these advanced um topics here but um at the minimum if you want to do replays you'll need a replay operator somebody who is watching the game like 10 seconds behind the action a producer to say hey we need a replay of this um and then you're going to need your caster to continue talking about the game okay um, you can use this application, Video Ninja. Um, it's free. It basically, um, if you have HDMI inputs, you can do it where I'm grabbing the HDMI from one computer and I'm importing it into this computer here, my streaming computer. You could do something like that. Uh, Video Ninja kind of negates that where you just kind of do, uh, you do a share online. But look at how the EU LEC um, for League of Legends kind of does theirs. Echo didn't lend a stun, Azir ult, Echo ult, and Azir should be able to win this. Echo is in trouble, Azir jumps There's in. There's two Echo operators left. here Echo watching the game. Spent. Both of them live, but what? really low. Uh, her job is to get the replay. Five seconds afterwards. You can go to Camille now. That should they be have it. multiple. That was really cool. Yeah, cameras watching the game uh, Morgana is ready for a binding right the casters are on stage casting the game okay I'm ready okay they call out the replay we look back at this replay and you can just see how effective this composition is how good this is when they have the setup okay and then they can talk about it and that's it replay over um it creates a lot more drama, a lot more to talk about with the viewers. So um, this was like kind of inspiration for me. Like I really want to create replays. So 
in order to do that, we needed somebody to kind of, I can't be like the producer and controlling the mouse, uh, the secondary computer. I don't even have a secondary computer at home, so I couldn't do it at home. Um, but it becomes like, I don't have four hands. So uh, you really need another person if you want to kind of start tackling replays. Basically, you'll create in OBS um, a replay scene. And then this will be the screen capture of that second computer. So if I'm doing a screen capture, I think I have a video capture device. Let me actually import it as a scene. Yeah, I'll put it under Smash Fight. Right, so this is L LCS again, live, <laughs> right? So we can just identify like this is a replay to our viewers. Um, maybe even have pop-ups in the bottom. You can see like they have pop-ups in the bottom in the L LCS. Um, you can have like some pop-ups of like what's happening live while you're talking about the replay. So that happens a lot as well. Um, so you can kind of compare like the replay that I had here and the replay, the way the LEC does it. Um, and the next one that I'm going to talk about are audio monitors. One of the things that you're going to want to do is, especially if you have two casters, you're going to have, you know, like caster one using this headset, caster two using this headset. Okay. Um, you want caster one and caster two, both their audios to go to your audience, whoever that might be. Um, so now if I want caster one and caster two to hear each other, like while they're talking, because when they're when they're um, casting next to each other in person, like there's a lot of noise in the room. Um, these mics or these headsets will cut out a lot of sound. So how do I get it where I'm talking, my audience can hear me, my producer can hear me, and my co-caster can hear me. Well, that's where audio monitors come in. So um, there is a studio, OBS Studio plugin. You just download this and it gets opened in OBS and installed, very simple. Um, this will also be good if you wanna kind of do like a podcast setup. Again, same thing, you want them to be able to talk and hear each other at the same time, like we normally would on a Zoom call. So um, in order to do this, I think it's a little bit easier for this one to be done in, in uh, screenshots, to talk about in screenshots. So in your audio mixer, this is going to be what your stream hears. But in your audio monitor, this is what your headphones can hear. Okay, so what your stream hears is going to be a little bit different than what your uh, headphones hear, what you hear as the producer. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone through my my window settings. When I plug in a device, I go into my window settings and I say exactly, you know, what is this device? I actually have them, um, try to hold it up to the screen a little bit, but I actually have them labeled so everyone knows this is headset one, this is headset two. And then I go into window settings and I label it in there as well. Um, I put in headset, mic, so I know when I'm going into OBS right here, what everything is, because these are actually renamed. They don't have the default names. Okay. Um, so we said earlier how you can add a filter. So let me see here. If I want caster two to be able to hear caster one, okay, I need to go to caster one because I want to be able to monitor what caster one is saying. So I'll go over here to caster one and I'll go to filters. Um, so I've got these already set up, but notice how I labeled them. Audio monitor to caster two. So I'm on caster one headset, but I want caster two to be able to um, hear everybody. So in order to do that, um, or I want caster two to be heard by caster one. So caster one headset mic, and I am going to route this to my second device. So you just come into device and you select it. Same thing with your producer. And you can have this going to 
as many headphones as you can connect to your computer. Um, how much ever the bandwidth on your computer can handle. You can turn it off and on. Um, and then what we normally do is we kind of level out the audio um, in, in, the, um, in the audio monitor. We send them out a little bit better to the to the audience, a little bit more evened out to the audience here. And then um, our individual casters can, you know, just use a little dial on their headsets to kind of adjust as they see fit. One of the things that's super helpful for our casters is we actually have them monitoring the music so they know like, um, okay, music's over. I'm supposed to be talking at this point. So I actually have it muted here, but normally you'd be able to hear it. Okay. So that's how you can kind of get that um, multiple uh, headset set up. Um, also, it's very good for the producer. If your producer wants to talk to caster one and caster two, um, your producer will have their mic muted, but they the monitors would be on for caster one and caster two. So they might the producer might say, hey, we have a replay coming. Three, two, one, give them a countdown. And then the casters would be telling the audience, like, all right, we're going to talk about this replay coming up. We're talking about this play. All right. The next two impossible things are overlays. So um, in League of Legends, you got some pretty good information. You get a lot of good information. Uh, but League Broadcast is an external tool um, that you can download from this link here at the top. And you can kind of create your own uh, backdrop score at the top. Uh, we actually created this overlay individually. This is just like a little movie that plays here on the bottom. But one of the things that you can see in League of Legends, you want to know how much gold difference there is between one team and the other. League Broadcast, which is, again, not affiliated with Riot or League of Legends, uh, but League Broadcast is something that you can install and will run on top of League of Legends. It'll pull the data and it'll feed it as an overlay into OBS. You would actually add it in as a browser source. Um, and then when your game is going, your casters can pull up like the goal difference and we can see oh red team is so far ahead at this point yada yada we can see the player goal there are a bunch of different buttons uh we can see like okay trundle bot this is actually just a bot game but you can see like okay trundle bot's really struggling in this game he's so far behind the gold you can this gives stuff um that is normally not so simple to see in league of legends um so it gives a lot of information that your viewers normally wouldn't get. So um, I like to play around with League Broadcast. It can break during the patch, which is unfortunate. Um, it takes a few days for it to update. And uh, so these overlays are, I will admit, these overlays are very picky and difficult to set up. Um, but if you want to learn how to just open up League Broadcast and use it on your own, um, Another coach out of Georgia uh, actually did a whole walkthrough on just League Broadcast. So that's this video here. If you want to add um, some nice little flair to, to your League of Legends matches. The other one is Rocket League. Um, Rocket League has a good camera but it doesn't really show a lot of information in terms of player boost. Um, and then the, the scene at the top uh, doesn't show the player uh, or the team names. So who's winning? Who's up for a zero? Very clearly, I can see in this overlay that it's Sandrock Gaming. In this one, I can see, okay, it's tied zero, zero. Uh, so I can see those things thanks to these overlays. In a regular League of Legends um, spectator view, you're not going to see that, and you're not going to see 
the uh, the boost amounts for individual players, like you can see at the top here. Um, so, is this possible in Rocket League? Again, the answer is yes, but very difficult to set up. Um, right here, I have two links. This is the only... Oh, wait, no, uh, that's a lie. This is one of two free overlays that I have found. Um, this one was the easiest to set up. It's still a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and it is not the easiest. Um, it's not the best looking tool, but it'll give a, some more information again so your viewers can follow along that game in a different way. So. Um, couple of videos you can go watch to, to set those up. So that's all OBS Studio stuff. The other one is a, uh, I wanted to show you guys the stream deck, specifically multi-actions. I'm not going to play these videos. They'll explain how to set up uh, multi-actions as well. Uh, but a couple of things that I have linked is uh, this blog, if you prefer to read how to set up multi-actions in uh, the stream deck. Um, and then this one, the first link, Shoutcasting Stream Deck Profile, that's my profile that I normally use while I'm um, casting. So right here is the Stream Deck interface. And then I got this a, a couple years ago from Playverse. So thank you for letting me do this webinar. <laughs> um, but this is the extra large one. These can get a little bit expensive and there are other free options, but um, if you want to set up a multi-action, so for example, let me open o OBS. Okay. In here, uh, wait, this is not the scene I want. Okay. In here, uh, everyone's getting ready. Um, we're telling our viewers nothing because this is just say, get ready, stream starting soon. Music is playing. And everyone who comes to watch our stream is going to see, all right, this is starting soon. Um, nothing's really happening right now. All right. But then, uh, so I've got the, sh the music going. So I'll turn the music on. We hear the music now. Uh, and that's the only one that's unmuted. Okay. So then I switch over to the smash waiting scene, or actually, let me go to the caster. Let's pretend like, we're going to the green screen camera. All right, here are our casters. Um, when I switch over to the casters, a lot of stuff has to happen. One, I make the transition. Two, I need to unmute um, caster one. I need to unmute caster two. I need to mute the music that was going on. Um, I need to make sure all of that happens. Okay, with the stream deck, come back. With the stream deck, that's a multi-action that I'm going to want to set up. So um, if you go over here on the right toolbar, we have our stream deck options. And I'm on an older version because I can't update this on the school computer since they downloaded it. Um, so, you know, I run into the same, you know, tech issues that every other school might be running into. But you have a multi-action and a multi-action switch. So um, if you have something that, is a transition from one scene to the next, I would use a multi-action. You can give it a title, you know, whatever. And then you drag from the possible OBS Studio options here, you can drag those over. So, okay, when I push this button, I need to switch over from the start screen to the green screen camera. My mixer audio, I need to activate headset one and my mixer audio, I need to activate headset two. So that's activated. And from my mixer audio, I need to deactivate the music soundtrack. That is gonna happen whenever I push this button on my stream deck. So that's a multi-action. Okay, so we have that happening when I go from starting soon screen to my main display or starting soon screen to my dual game setup or my smash fight setup. Lots of different things are happening. Uh, but also let me show you this one. Okay. In OBS, 
I have my smash bands scene. Um, I've got some stuff here, right? If I have a caster here who's going to be talking about it, we can have them over here in the corner. No biggie. Um, I'll just deactivate that source right now. I also have my music playing. Sometimes I want it on. Sometimes I want it off. Uh, and then I had this folder of all the stages. All right, so let's see. Like this is a lot of stuff that's happening, but I have it organized very nicely. So for example, um, we had the starter stages. So we're talking about the Smash Bands, um, the new, hopefully soon released uh, Playverse Match Assistant feature would help, you know, get rid of this little bit. But uh, the way we had it set up is um, we'll be monitoring the chat. So the producer will monitor the chat in Super Smash Brothers and a player will ban something like Battlefield. So on the stream deck, um, they'll just push, oops, the Battlefield ban. So, boop. Okay, Battlefield, that gets, okay, we just saw Battlefield get banned and the X pops up. I can do the same thing with Final Destination. Okay, now my viewers know Final Destination was banned, X pops up. If I want to remove the X, um, all you have to do is push that button again because this one is a multi-action switch. And so when I push it again as the switch, it just removes the X. So we might do like a ban here, Final Destination, okay? We might go over to the Smash fight. Okay, they're fighting a Smash. Again, this isn't Smash, but whatever. But on the back end, while this is happening, the producer can undo that Final Destination band. So then when we go back to the Smash band scene, boom, it, there's no longer an X there. It's a, back to a clean screen. We haven't... Uh, we we broke something uh, recently, so we have to go back and fix those two X's on the bottom ones. But all the other ones, all the other buttons will work as intended, just like I showed you. So that's how multi-actions can be done on a stream deck. Stream decks can be pretty expensive. They're pretty um, standard in advanced stream setups or very huge broadcast things have different buttons. But um, there are also free options that I've that I've seen, like Touch Portal. I think is either free or cheap. Okay, so here's some additional resources that you guys can just come back and look. Okay, if you want to connect a console, if you want to see some of the videos, just a full vod of League of Legends to see what kind of happens in there. Uh, if you just want a, an article on everything you need for beginners, this article is there. Okay, but what I want to do right now is I showed you a lot of like advanced stuff. Is there anything that I didn't cover that you might want to know? Anything at all? And then we can go ahead and answer those with our um, last like 10, 15 minutes. Could be as basic or as advanced as you might want. I'll actually ask a question just to kick things off. Uh, All right. How long have you been? Uh, how long have you been streaming? I guess like uh, just to like, give a good idea of how long you've been doing this to build up this knowledge for. Um, I got into it at the start of COVID. So okay, COVID happened. <laughs> yeah, COVID happened, <laughs> and I was just like, I'm gonna start streaming. I'm home all day and on my computer all day. But then it was like that summer that there was like a coaches like League of Legends tournament. And I was like, oh, let's enhance this production. And we started like getting really into it. Everything that you see in like these uh, videos from Coach Rivals here, I don't actually mm -hmm. do any of the graphics. I actually have somebody else do the graphics who likes doing graphics. I like to do the stream setup. I like to cast games. That's where I kind of find my niche. We have a uh, we have an internal uh person that uh for like the play versus stadium stuff the handful of streams we've done it's i'm the same way i'm like i i dabble but i'm not as good somebody else can do the designing <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's me too i can't um like look at look at this slide 
that I made this like you could tell I made this like <laughs> I'm like I, I need um all the information there but I want to always compile it to make it as smooth and professional as possible yeah I mean it is there's so many like minor like uh adjustments you can make to really up the professionalism uh, mm -hmm. of a broadcast um even something as simple as making sure like you mentioned uh making sure the music is continuously playing between scenes um, mm -hmm. and not like restarting that. is a big one yeah mm -hmm. not restarting <clears throat> it's so much more than just like oh i had there's lag on the stream and i'm dropping frames it's there's a lot of mm -hmm. small uh niche things that i feel like you did a great job covering mm -hmm. um does anybody did have I lose, questions <laughs> did i lose everybody <laughs> oh wait i think there's something in the the q a okay okay how, 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 do you see it yeah how much of this can one person reliably do um i would say setting up the scenes and going through this um one person can uh we had a joke in the production that we had this summer it it it's called coach rivals it's a it's a community uh that started from playverse actually but it's just a bunch of coaches that like to play games together um but there's a joke there that it wouldn't be a coach rival stream if we didn't start everything muted because <laughs> inevitably we're not we're not a full cast. We're not a full production. Um, it's as much as one person can handle. Um, one of the things that we've implemented is having like a run of show. Like at when you start the stream, these things should be happening. These things should be on and off. Okay. When you swap to this scene at this time, these scenes should be going on. Push this button, you know, have it very clear and, and spelled out on a piece of paper for my students. But um, the setup, going through the filters, um, you're going to need some help, all right? It'll be, I, like I said, I don't do any graphics. Um, but I can push the buttons and watch a League of Legends match and swap between, like, I, and I could probably cast at the same time and swap. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do a replay, but I'd be able to control the camera Um during the spectator view and stuff and talk about the game. Um, and then when the game's over, swap, push a button on my stream deck, you know, just have a camera on me and talk about like, okay, you know, where that was a great match, you know, talk about what I saw during the match. Um, but at minimum, I would have two to three students. That's what it would take to, to have all of this going well during a stream. Two to three students, one cast or one producer. Um, and then if you add in a third student, you could do replays, one caster, producer, replay operator, or you could have two casters, producer, you know, just think about that. You could have someone in charge of graphics. Like any of these graphics I never made. This is all student made that, that I have on the screen. Students did all of this slowly, <laughs> very slowly. Over two years, we've done this, but yeah. They've done it all. Yeah, I think uh, I think the important part, oh, one of the most important parts right there is the two is over two years. Like you build up a lot of stuff, uh, not just knowledge, uh, but content over time and realizing mm -hmm. uh you talked about muting. There's so many times where I forget to make a transition uh at an event and I'm just leaving it on my face instead of showing the screen. I've done that two or three mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Um so. I would highly encourage you if your your kids are looking at stuff, start small, have two scenes, right? You know, if it's the beginning, have a starting soon screen, maybe some information. We just redid this last week too. Um, but have a starting soon screen and then your main game. Okay, so if it's Smash or League of Legends, you come and you show this and you do nothing else. Okay, like start there. <laughs> And have somebody cast in this game so that parents, other students, spectators can really enjoy, you know, what our kids enjoy. So, like, 
that takes one person and they don't even need to be hanging around the entire time. <laughs> I'm happy to show you guys anything else or to talk over anything else, or if you have like specific questions about how to like replicate. Um, honestly, I just watch a lot of professional streams. Um, if we ever get a Valorant or Overwatch team, I'll be watching those games a lot more too because I want to replicate those and kind of create that um, that notoriety for my program and for my students to get seen a little bit more. Yeah, watching is watching other streams, watching other, uh, and not even just the big productions, uh, watching other high schools compete. If you're in the, if you join, if you're not already, definitely join the Play Versus Discord. Uh, there's a lot of coaches in there. They'll share when they're streaming. Um, you know, we got a little promo channel and a lot of them put on very, very good productions. Uh, and just with like a handful of students and stuff like Robbie here. So uh, definitely uh, you can use that as an additional resource as well. All right. Um, if you guys do have any questions coming up, this is going to get recorded. Um, and it'll get posted and emailed out so you can go back and rewatch it. Definitely check out all the freebies. Like the scene transitions is like a couple buttons. It does so much just to, um, and the, all the ones that I, I source there are free. You guys can use those. I, I ripped them off of someone else that was also free. So you don't have to go look at those anymore. Um, but definitely ask questions about, you know, in the Discord about like, you know, if you want to um, like, hey, how do I do this? I normally pop in for those questions a lot. Yeah, super helpful. I thank you, Robbie, for uh, walking us through everything. Uh, look forward to doing it again, for sure. I think uh, there's a lot of folks that will uh, continue to get uh, some use out of this, uh, especially the resources. Really appreciate you putting together all those free resources for for our coaches here and then for the ones who are watching on VOD. Yeah, I already had someone right before this. It was like, hey, does anyone have any background music I could play? And I just came to this <laughs> and I just threw the link in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny how quickly things can come together when it comes to streaming and production. So yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if, again, if you have any questions, you can hop in the Discord, email support at playversus.com. Uh, we'll figure out a way to get y'all connected to uh, the best sources to ask those questions too. So <laughs> hope y'all have a great rest of your Thursdays and enjoy your weekend. All right. Thank you, everybody.